What is going on guys welcome back to the go programming tutorial series in today's video we're going to talk about functions so let us get right into it all right so let's talk about functions in go for those of you who don't know what functions are functions are just blocks of reusable code so when we write a function the main function is also a function when we write a function down here which is not the main function so let's say function hello for example and i have some code inside of that function for example fmt.printline hello world and it doesn't have to be just one line. I can, oh, wrong copy here. I can just print multiple things. I can do multiple things. I can just call this whole block using this statement. I can just call hello, and then it's going to call uh, the whole block of code down here. So functions allow us to write code once and execute it using one line at multiple uh, places in the code. So that's the same in all programming language. We have functions in Go, we have them in Python and Java and all the different languages. Uh, in Go, the syntax is a little bit different. So first of all, we have this function keyword that we use to define a function. So F-U-N-C, func. The func keyword is defining a function. And the interesting thing about this in Go is that if this function is not a void function, as it's called in other languages, so if it does not return a value, usually a function is a void function, in languages like Java and so on. In Go, every function is defined with a function keyword and the return value is specified in the end. So even if this function, let's just write another function here. So let's call the function, um, function at, for example. If this function returns something, so let's say we give that function some parameters. We say we give the parameter x and x is an integer. And we give the parameter y and y is also an integer. So by the way, this is also important in Go, we don't say int x and int y as it's done in many other programming languages. We, uh, we say x int y int. So we first specify the name of the parameter and then the actual data type. Now, if we want to say that add is going to return something, we cannot just go ahead and say return x plus y because that would return something that we did not specify. So if we want to have a return value, we need to specify it after the parentheses here, we need to say, okay, this function returns an integer, we cannot say int at we don't say something like int at, like it's done in other programming languages, that's not the Go syntax and go we need to specify it's a function, those are the parameters, and this is the return value data type. So in this case, this function takes two integers as a parameter, x and y, it returns an, inter an integer, which is the sum x plus y. So if I call this here, fmt.println at 1020, you're going to see that this is going to print 30. As you can see down here. So uh, another way to define the parameters or to to declare the parameters if they all have the same data type is you can just go ahead and say, a, b, c, for example, and all those three are integers like that. And of course, we have to pass a third one here then. Uh, but that is how you can also do it. If a, b and c are all integers, you can say a, b, c, and then one time int. And of course, we need to say a plus b plus c here. <clears throat> so that is how you define basic functions in Go. Now, what you can also do is you can define variadic functions, which means that the amount of parameters is not static, you can you can define, uh, you can pass as many values as you want. So for example, what would be an application of that, let's say we have a function, which we call sum, and we want to get the sum of many different numbers. Now, of course, I can say a, b, c, d, e, f, and so on, and say those are all integers, and I just return to sum. But what if I want to pass 100 values? Now, what I can do in that situation is I can say, I want to have multiple parameters, which I'm going to call numbers. And I'm going to say dot 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 int. This means that I'm going to get as many integers as the user passes. And let's say I want to return an integer as well. This is how you define it, you say, okay, we have a sum, a function sum that gets some numbers and those numbers are that can be 10 can be 20, it can be 200, we pass a certain amount of numbers. And then we return an integer, for example, the sum of that. And in order to calculate that, we would have to say something like my sum equals zero. And then we just say for nothing and number 
equals range number. So we can treat it as a collection because it is a collection. Uh, as you can see, it's an integer array. For that, we're going to say my sum plus equals number. And in the end, we're going to return my sum. There you go. So now you can see that I can actually go ahead and pass some 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, for example, and we're going to get 150 then. So if I run this, you can see that we get 150 and I can add more numbers, I can add fewer numbers, I can also pass a whole array. So I can say, for example, array equals integer array with the values again, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, for example, and then I just copy that. And instead of passing the individual values, I can just pass the array. And you're going to see that the results, uh, what do we have here? S type int, what's the problem here? Oh, of course, we need to add the dots. Otherwise, it's not going to recognize that. So we need to say array, period, 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 or dot, dot, dot. Otherwise, it's going to treat it as an array. And this does not work. If we want to pass multiple val values from an array, to a variadic function, we need to add these dots here. And then it's going to have the exact same output. As you can see 150 and 150. Now, last but not least, for today's video, I also want to talk about closures, uh, which are similar for those of you who already know about uh, yielding in Python or generators in Python, that is quite similar, because we're using an anonymous function an inline function, uh, which we then return as a return value for another function. So let's say we have not the sum here, but we have a different function, we have the function, uh, I don't know, even numbers, let's call it even numbers. And inside of that function, I just uh, specify a control variable i to start at zero. And the return value of this function is not going to be an integer, it's going to be a function which returns an integer. So I'm going to say the return value of this function is another function which returns an integer, like that. And then what I do is I return that function by saying return function with the return value integer. And this function is just going to increase i by two, and it's going to return i. There you go. So that is a closure. It's called a closure and go. The basic idea is that now I can go ahead and create something that is similar to a Python generator. What I do is I say, for example, next even number. And I say next even number is even numbers. So I can treat even numbers as a sequence because even numbers returns a function which always increases i by two and returns i. So if I now go ahead and say fmt dot print line, and I call next even number, which is now a function, remember, and I do this not once, but I do this a couple of times, you're going to see that this is going to generate a sequence for us. So you can see 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and so on. So this is something that is possible in Go, it is not possible with every programming language, for example, in Java, I'm pretty sure you cannot do that, because you treat a function here as, uh, I think it's called a first class entity, you treat a function as something that can be returned and passed. Uh, this is also possible in Python. But that's very interesting, because here you return a function, and this function is then um, can be called and generate a sequence. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.